In the previous videos, we have covered the different methods of entering data and we also talked about the different number formats available by which we can enter different types of information in Excel and allow Excel to interpret and display them accordingly. In the upcoming videos, we will talk about how can we change the look of the data that we see. This is more about the cosmetic look of the spreadsheet. We're not going to be talking about the type of data. We're going to be talking about how it looks. For example, the font color, the type of font that we use, should we have a border or not? So those kinds of things which changes just cosmetically what how the data looks and that's what we will be covering in the upcoming videos before we start talking about that in this video we will go over a few tips about storing data so when you look at the table that we have here you know what these columns mean you know that the first one is names of the books that we have in our bookstore then we have the author names and then the year published and then the maximum retail price and then the profit margin. But if you are sending this information to somebody else, or if you don't use this information for a while, maybe two months, and then you start looking at it again, then you may not remember what each column means. So we're gonna be talking about a good practice for us when we store data. Columns are called fields in database terminology and rows are called records. And this range of cells that we have here can be called as a table in database terminology. Now, in order to easily identify each field or column, we usually give them names. So each column should have a name. Excel's column heading here A really doesn't tell us what type of information it is, but we would like to create field names for each of the columns so that they are meaningful and they help us identify what type of information we have in each of these columns. So in order to do so, let's create or insert a new row above this first row. So I'm going to right click here on row header one or row number one and I'm going to do insert and that will insert a new row. And I'm going to type in the name of the first field or column, which is the name of the book. So I can just name it as book name, hit enter. And now the second one is authors. And then I can do published year. And then we have max retail price and lastly we have margin so now let me just select all the columns and then do an auto fit so that we can see all the column titles here and what we have now is a table where the first row represents the field names or the column names and the first row in in such a case is also referred to as the header row because it has the headings of the columns of information we have. Now also, since this is a table or this is a set of data about our books, and so let's also write that down somewhere. So I'm going to click on the row number one and insert, and let's say here, I want to, I want to store the name of our bookstore and books i have given a name now and if you share this with somebody they would know what information do you have in this table so it is about our inzara bookstore and it's all about the books so this table has information about the books we have so this is an approach which is okay for now because i'm trying to explain to you certain concepts but in some situations writing the name of the table at the top may not be a good idea and we will cover those in the future videos but in some scenarios you always want the first row to be the names of the fields and not something else so in this case i'm going to keep this table name here 
However, generally a good practice is always have the column names at the top row. 